Hello and welcome to another ADLC digital lesson. Today's lesson is on pedigree. Perhaps you've seen a family tree or you've built one yourself. Many people research their family history, perhaps with photos or scrapbooks. There are even websites dedicated to researching family trees. Normally, this is just for fun, to learn more about all the generations in your family, or just for pure curiosity. But when a genetic disease occurs within a family, for example, a baby unexpectedly has a genetic condition when the parents do not, this is a serious reason for doing research into a family's history. A pedigree is an attempt to map out the genotypes for generations in a family for a particular trait or disease. For example, this is a pedigree for hemophilia, a serious disease where affected individuals lack the proper clotting proteins in their blood, so even small cuts and bruises can be dangerous because the bleeding can be very slow to stop. When looking at this example hemophilia pedigree, it can seem quite confusing. It has multiple generations of different types of symbols, so perhaps we should first take a simpler approach. Just for fun, let's use some cute rabbits to create a pedigree. The trait here is colorful tartan rabbit. Now, this doesn't really exist. We're just making this up for study purposes. Let's say the tartan rabbit is autosomal recessive. So the only way a rabbit can be tartan is to have two recessive alleles, or small t, small t. So let's look at the first generation of rabbits born to this couple. We see that they have four babies, and one of them is tartan. Well, that confirms three things. One, the tartan baby obviously must be homozygous for the small t allele. And two, the parents must be heterozygous. We know this because the tartan baby rabbit would not be possible if each of the parents did not have a recessive allele to pass down. And three, we know that the three other rabbits from this cross must be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous but we can't be absolutely sure which. Now let's look at another generation. We see that a bunch of tartan baby rabbits are produced. So does that help us determine more genotypes? It certainly does. First, we know that the white rabbit parent in this second generation must be heterozygous. If it was homozygous dominant, it would be impossible for any of the babies to be tartan but this couple produced four out of eight tartan babies. If we look at the Punnett square for this cross, it confirms that we would expect a possibility of 50% of the babies to be tartan. It also tells us that the non-tartan babies must be heterozygous. Now, if we want to do a lot of pedigree charts, it's not really practical to draw rabbits or other creatures. So instead, we use easy to draw symbols. Typically, this is done using squares and circles to represent males and females, white or black to show normal or affected, and half and half when we are sure the genotype is heterozygous. Remember that when someone is heterozygous for a genetic disease, they are called a carrier. You can also be comfortable in adding question marks to your symbols when you are not sure if they are normal or a carrier. So now let's return back to that difficult pedigree for hemophilia, and maybe we can make more sense of it. The first thing that seems obvious on this pedigree is that it has many female carriers and no male carriers. Second, the pedigree is filled with male victims of this disease, but no female victims. This is very strong evidence that this is a sex-linked disease, with the allele causing hemophilia located on the X chromosome. Since men only have one copy of the X chromosome, it's no wonder they are more likely to inherit the disease.